morning everyone. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks Manas. Thanks for inviting uh, me over here uh, to address this vibrant and young gathering. Uh, and in terms of, uh, in the sense that it's, it's a, I could see this is an end professional network, uh, which is what uh, we are up to here. And uh, basically it's a, it's, it's a privilege for me to be here on the Saturday morning. And it's also a sort of a, uh, 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 a platform wherein uh, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to give a presentation on shipping finance, which is a sort of a pleasure because being in finance, going through all these uh, on day in and day out, uh, you somewhere or other feel uh, that your knowledge has to be shared. Uh, so I, I think it's the right platform for me to uh, put my thoughts here on the shipping finance. And let me tell you that uh, basically there is a sort of a large, large impetus which is being today given by the government of India uh, in this sector. And now it all depends on uh, how how much we are going to absorb. Uh, Manas was in his introductory speech was talking about uh, the fact that uh, uh, in, in, in the past there had been a lot of constraints, etc. But uh, according to me, past is past. Uh, rather, today's today's world, uh, the government has come out. There has been a lot of campaigns in various uh, sort of uh, uh, areas, various sort of uh, stretch uh, areas have been identified, and the government is working on it. And uh, on that account, uh, uh, what is more important for us is to we need to we need to use this in the right direction. Uh, we need to have our objective straight and once if we can have that uh, clear uh, in terms of our objective uh, then I think uh, we can work upon very well. So if today for example a platform like this where we are meeting, where we are uh, sharing our views itself is a sort of an indication if I put it appropriately uh, which, which is, uh, which is a quite a positive indicator and it shows where we are leading to. Otherwise, say for example, a decade back, I don't think uh, we, we used to talk on these lines. So the convergence of the fact that uh, Vista, for, for that matter, as Sanjay has pointed out, coming together and promoting in, in their own capacity, or for that matter, uh, SP and NM coming together and uh, starting this initiative, itself shows how in what direction we are moving. So that's a, that's a great commendable achievement uh, and I appreciate the team of yours and the team of Bitsa so that uh, we all can work towards in the right direction. And uh, on this note, I would like to begin my presentation on shipping finance on a very positive note. No doubt we are seeing a lot of things across and the environment what we are surrounded by. But I would like to first talk uh, before just jumping into the shipping finance aspect. Uh, on a few minutes on what the cycle of shipping is because to know and understand the importance and to make sure that we are we are using that key consideration for shipping finance in the right direction we need actually we need to uh, know the shipping cycle and that is what uh, is a very very important step if with my experience and knowledge what it uh, shows so basically all of us, what happens is we talk about shipping cycle and majority of us uh, talk about, if I, if I understand correctly, especially under the given scenario in a very, very uh, pessimistic way. Uh, according to me, that is not the case. Uh, like any, any, uh, any sort of a commodity or any sort of an aspect uh, goes through a cycle. Uh, there's no doubt about it. In life, uh, all of us are matured enough to know that uh, uh, life itself is a cycle, so you do have ups and downs, so as shipping industry. Uh, but the more important thing is how you manage it. So, uh, say for example, when we, we are today in the morning talking about or concentrating on shipping finance, why, why we are doing it? No doubt, the key considerations, uh, few, few slides down the line, which I am going to take it up, will further, in a way, explicitly highlight. But when I when I am putting the emphasis on uh, this very aspect, why we, we are talking about shipping finance, it has to have a very important link 
because of the fact that, say for example, you, many of us would have applied for a credit card, uh, right? Or for that matter, even as Manas has been pointing out for a housing loan. Uh, I don't think none of us would have taken the pain of going through uh, the details of a credit card application. Uh, probably the person would have come, would have sat over there and just would have marked the places where you had to sign and uh, you would have signed it and that's it and then you start using it. Uh, so as in the case of today in a city like Bombay, people even for them are housing finances like that. They might not have even gone through the document, they would have just signed off wherever the uh, authority or the representative is coming and requiring them to sign it off. And that's it. And you you take almost 80% uh, of your asset value as, as loan and you don't even know what you have signed off in that paper. Uh, because why it is happening? Because you at any given point of time know and especially in a city like Bombay, which unfortunately or fortunately doesn't follow a cycle like a shipping one because you always see the property prices raising. Uh, but it, uh, why do you do that? Because you, you get the comfort. Uh, you know pretty well that what you are entering into is something uh, very, very comfortable within the framework of yours. And you know for sure that uh, the conditions or the values at, at which or the levels at which you are entering, you are comfortable. And more importantly, the consequences of what you are entering or the downside is not there. So that mental comfort gives you the flexibility to go and just sign off the papers. But that is not the case in case of shipping and that's precisely why you need to take that extra bit of effort uh, to make sure that what you are doing is in the right direction. So basically when I say of shipping cycle, people, as I mentioned, always look at it as a sort of a negative, oh, shipping goes through rough patches, etc. That's not the case. Uh, today, for example, uh, a person who is sitting with uh, tons of money or lot of money is, is a probably a very good opportunity for him to enter the market. Uh, it again depends on what sector, what uh, kind of segment you want to enter and what levels you want to enter. And for that, actually, you have to do a lot of effort, a lot of um, brainstorming, a lot of analysis, paralysis, and a lot of study has to be done. So again, uh, when you talk about the present shipping environment, which is also an important sort of a preface to a key consideration of finance is, let us talk about for a minute like uh, the Indian environment today. As I just mentioned, uh, in the Indian environment, uh, the government of India is today giving you a lot of impetus uh, to go into the shipping. Uh, ship building, there is a huge revival because of the Make in India campaign. Uh, there is also a sort of a uh, financial impetus or incentives which are being given to you. A uh, lot of uh, uh, sort of a, uh, 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 encouragement by by putting certain rules and regulations wherein foreign uh, sort of a shipbuilding is being uh, not promoted, if I put it correctly. Then Indian government also giving or uh, telling the state-owned firms uh, to at least pass on 50% of the freight business uh, to, to Indian ship owners. Uh, Indian uh, cabinet is also planning to consider a bill wherein all the oil uh, sector or for that matter steel or for that matter coal and fertilizer imports are to be uh, done by the Indian shipping owners. Uh, there is different sector which is uh, coming up wherein in terms of Navy there is a huge, huge uh, impetus and there is a huge expenditure which has been planned by the reference and also if you look at it uh, in terms of value in uh, if I am not wrong in 2013-14 the freight bill or the ex for importing the freight services was to the tune of 57 billion dollars so by taking these steps at least uh, say a 50 to 55 percent of the things gets converted to indigenous thing we are talking of a very, very big market. So, so what is important is to understand is that shipping cycle, it is not always, it is a sort of a constraint or a threat. It is also, to, it also gives you the opportunity, how you uh, really capture that opportunity, how you use the opportunity is for you. Same is especially being in India, from the Indian context, if we look at it, 
uh, I think we are we are at the right time. As I said, our objectives has to be straight, and how we move about is what is more important. And also, what is important for us is to understand that the demand and supply consideration. When we move in for the key considerations for finance, I think we have to do a lot of exercise with respect to the market dynamics and the timing of the investment. So once once an entity plans its sort of an objective of going or venturing into this segment, it has to really work upon various parameters and, and, and have to understand how the market dynamics are moving. And to this effect, uh, uh, according to me, uh, any stretch of uh, sort of a putting in uh, a sort of a knowledge base or a think tank to know where we are heading is not enough. Uh, it's a continuous endeavor. Uh, we should keep on working on it and we should keep on. It's a learning process. It's, it never ends. Like in life, uh, till the last breath, you learn things. Similarly, is in this industry, there is no set formula for this. It's a dynamic environment, it keeps on changing, there's no sort of A plus B is equal to C plus D formula. So, but what it really helps is these kind of data crunching uh, lead to a sort of at least informed decision making. Uh, you, are, you are quite, at the end of the day, confident and quite, at the end of the day, comfortable when you have done the exercise and say that I have taken this decision based on all these parameters. So as I just mentioned, so for us to do into a sort of a shipping uh, finance or the key consideration for shipping finance, for us it is always, or for any entrepreneur, it is always important to go into the nitty gritties of the cycle, uh, the market dynamics, the, the environment in which it is working. So once you have done this basics right, uh, then what the considerations you have to be really uh, giving the importance up to is uh, with respect to the capital intensive nature of the industry, uh, which is according to me is a very, very important parameter. That's why when I just mentioned sometime back as an example, uh, when, you, when you go in for a, for, a, for a minute, when you go in for today for an, even a house acquisition today, uh, I, don't, I don't think so we analyze that much because it gives you the comfort. But as far as shipping is concerned, uh, the extra bit of efforts has to be taken because of the nuances or the kind of information which is hidden and which doesn't come out very easily unless until you go into the depth of the things. Uh, just, just when I mention it's such a capital intensive nature of the shipping industry, what I really mean is, say for the acquisition of an asset, uh, when you go and acquire an asset, uh, many people what they think is it's only the sort of a contract value at which you are entered and that's it. So if you say for a minute you entered a hundred million dollar worth of acquisition of an asset, it's hundred million. Oh, that's that's precisely not the case. Uh, say for example, even uh, the same asset, if you want to bring it into India after say you have ordered an asset out of China or you have ordered an asset as of East Asian VR and you want to bring in that asset into India because you have got a potential data. And the moment you enter, there is a custom duty aspect of it. So whether you are really analyzed that, whether your capital intensive nature of ship, ship, shipping industry is so critical that when you do a sort of an acquisition program, the minutest of the expenditure has to be considered. So whether that kind of a homework has been done or not. Second most important, new build versus second hand. People think, okay, our oh, new build is so expensive. Let me go for a second and almost, or I have got the same spec. Everything is matching. Only it's, it's just instead of a 2016, it is 2006. So one digit here or there, what is the big thing? Otherwise, everything is there. That's not the case. Let me tell you, when you are going to get something uh, for a lesser value, uh, there is definitely something in it. Some hidden factors are there. Otherwise, the seller of the ship is not so bad to give you or extend you just on the fact of the fact on the fact that the depreciation is the only aspect uh, on the on the vessel. Okay, because the most important thing, according to me, when you go in for a second-hand vessel, 
it's the technology part of it. That technological part is so, so critical today. Uh, uh, number one, before even the technology part, is the age factor. Uh, people have to realize that worldwide, because of HSC, QHSC reasons, uh, prominent or renowned charters are putting age norms. And when you are going to put age norms, to that extent, what you are doing is you are shrinking the life of the asset. So that is number one. Number two is the technological aspect. How technology has improved in one's life, everyone knows. So uh, when you are talking about, uh, say, a 10-year-old vessel or a 15-year-old vessel or even a 5-year-old vessel, what you are talking about, you are technologically backed by that time, unless and until you have that, uh, you have that uh, sort of a, a capability inbuilt uh, in that vessel, provided even after spending the money in that second hand vessel, I don't think you can ever match the new vessel which is going to be delivered today. So one has to be extra cautious when you are talking about going in for a second hand. Also one of the most critical thing with respect to shipping industry is with respect to the fuel efficiency factor. What happens is times have changed, uh, you, you have got modernized like a uh, diesel electric engine. Uh, which comes, which works in a, uh, almost one third of what otherwise you are, say a 10 year old is going to consume. And charterers also worldwide have become very, very educated. Uh, what they do is, if, if you go for a typical requirement today and flip through the pages of a tender document or a requirement document, uh, what happens, the charter is very specific about certain things and one of them is a fuel efficiency factor. And they just pass out the owners that if the, if the vessel is not going to need or if it is going to cross a level of efficiency in terms of fuel, you have to bear the fuel. So, or even for that matter, you enter into a sort of an arrangement where fuel is on your account, uh, definitely you are going to burn more fuel. So, when you take a decision with respect to second hand vessel because it's a new build, uh, according to me, just, just don't go for the fact that okay, I'm going to get a sort of a cheap product or a, or a vessel which is affordable or something to that effect. Uh, rather, one has to really introspect and see the fact what you are getting in. Uh, otherwise, the decision of the second hand can one can go provided it is so confident that he can write off that asset during the period of the contract and ultimately you have you have left out with. Uh, you are at the end of the day. I think the first of the charter should be capable enough of uh, writing of your inventory. And the firm and the charter has to be a firm charter, it cannot have any different work. Uh, then also what matters for shipping finance is the bill, in which country it has been very educated CPR and uh, what is the kind of flat scale which you are going to have. Uh, because these are all again key parameters. Uh, key, uh, Finance when we talk about, I am not restricting only to Indian uh, sort of a uh, framework. Uh, it is it, it's global that we are talking here. So many many banks which are more shipping centric or which knows this business very well uh, give a huge huge sort of an emphasis on the shipyard. Uh, uh, probably that decides the fate of the deal uh, in, in a uh, hours conversation. Uh, that is the most, okay, a sort of an important point which is to be uh, kept in mind. Then, most important is also the speculative versus the certainty of charter. So, when you go in for uh, a sort of a ship acquisition or ship building program, um, as I just started this entire conversation, uh, one has to have also have a complete, complete knowledge base of where you are heading for that specific category of people. Uh, especially at any given market, uh, it is easy for one to just put it in a, a sort of a presentation slide about a certainty of charter. I know how difficult it is, rather it entire things revolves around the charter when you acquire an asset. But what is, what is also important here is, uh, when I take certainty of charter, why we say certainty of charter or how you can really talk about a certainty of char charter because if you traditionally or even today if you look at it, 
many of these shipping companies, uh, which again is connected down below when I go through the presentation, as a risk mitigation model, okay, uh, they go in for uh, extension of the business in a very logical progression. And many times the, the group businesses helps you out to make sure that when you are going in for an asset, there is a definite degree of certainty of charter. Okay, if today my vessel is not going to be put in market or even put in market, there's not going to be any charter. I am here to see to it that my group business supports it. So to that effect, if you can make sure and make your model robust, uh, then the consideration for shipping finance completely differs. Then again, one more aspect of uh, consideration for shipping finance is buying versus leasing. Uh, it is not always necessary uh, that uh, when, you, when you endeavor for a project, you have to go and buy. Uh, there are various options available. Uh, uh, even it is not that at the initial instance, if you are not buying, that you cannot own the asset. And down the line, after a few years, uh, when operations get stabilized, you could uh, really plow back the money what you have earned during that period. Uh, you can ultimately own. So the arrangements can be brought in such a way with the, with the, with the entity or the, with the organization or the outfit which is financing the ship. Uh, there, are, there are flexible sort of an opportunities today wherein you can sit across the table and enter into such a way. Finally, according to me, which is very much applicable for new builds, is what is very, very important today is the payment terms with shipping, uh, shipyard, shipbuilding contract or the shipyard where you are entered. Uh, I think one has to be cognizant of the fact what is happening in the market. Uh, don't ever feel shy of negotiating uh, with the shipyard. Uh, go for the, uh, since uh, I am taking it for granted that I am addressing the aspiring ship owners here. So naturally you in the capacity of owners should always go in for uh, the maximum sort of a negotiation. Uh, especially that when the times are bad or even for that matter when times are good. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, if the yard is an established yard, uh, and as I, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, yard is also a very important factor of uh, the selection criteria for you. But what I mean to say is if the yard is good and they can understand your business model or your potential, uh, they are there to support you. The, uh, down below again, when we we'll go down the line, I, there is also a concept of what you call as yard financing, uh, which I'll touch base uh, when we we'll go down the line. So these are the key considerations for shipping finance and once the once once uh, uh, the entity is is done the analysis on these slides, then you can go for various financing options. Uh, when I mean